new videos every day. Life Wisdom. Dr. Balanzi, we've heard that our DNA and our genetics can predispose us to different illnesses and things like that. And now there's actually evidence that our DNA could predispose us to having negative reactions to certain drugs. I'm glad you use the word predispose because for too long people have assumed that this gene means this and it's, it's not that way at all. Your genetics actually are responding to your lifestyle. But one thing that we have got enough information on now is certain variations in the genetic code that will indicate, let's say, different responses from your body. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your genetics, we've, we've actually isolated. Unfortunately, we, we have this, hopefully in the future, where we can test your genetic code, which we can do fairly inexpensively now. The prices come way down. Mm -hmm. You can actually have your, your whole genetic DNA laid out by a computer and the the problem is interpreting what that means mm -hmm. so it's almost like learning a new language but we know enough now that we have been able to find out that perhaps you're you're going to be a little uh interfered with in the way that you detoxify something so the biggest danger with a lot of medications is that the body doesn't effectively detoxify them and they become even more toxic in a sense. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to do a process called biotransformation, which means that you take that drug, you transport to, transform it to something water soluble, and then you can eliminate it because mm -hmm. you want to keep these drugs in your body. Right. They're put in, they do their job, they've got to leave. If we know th these certain variations and we can identify them and then correlate that to the drugs that you're taking we have the chance of really avoiding a lot of adverse events. And the reason is because if you have a certain genetic variation and you can't detoxify the drug, we can kiss that before you start taking it wow. and, and offer you an alternative. So we literally can say, don't take this one, but let's use this instead. We'll get a similar effect or, or, or whatever. It's not that we're trying to say all drugs are bad, but again, it's still in its infancy. We don't know enough about genetics necessarily to make a lot the decisions that we want to make in the future. Right. But we do know this now. In fact, the FDA actually now has a site on what's called pharmacogenomics, which is how your genetics interplay with the medications. <clears throat> and the last I looked, it was over 166 medications listed with the genetic variations that, that should, let's say, be avoiding those drugs. Wow. So we can do a, a test, and you can use saliva, hair, nails, blood, whatever. Uh, we do a saliva test in the office, and it's actually being incorporated into a study. And that study is also going to add more legitimacy to what mm -hmm. we're talking about and, and give us better information. But in the study, they're, they're determining people that are on medication, whether or not that's the proper medication for them. A pharmacist is looking over the list, looking over the genetic variations, and then we get a report back with suggestions on, on what should be used instead. Or maybe you're on something that's fine for you. Right. But knowing that, it not only is peace of mind, but then the FDA doesn't get thousands and thousands of adverse event reports. Right. And already they've seen a, a dent being made. So the next step is to start labeling these medications saying, well, don't take this if you have these genes. Right. And I think that that would really be helpful for people because there's so many different drugs out there. Oh, there are different classes and uh, there's so many different choices. Yes. Right. So if we actually have a step that we can take to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and avoid things that science now shows is, you know, really going to be more harmful for certain people with these certain genetic, mm -hmm. um, certain things in their genetics, then yes, certainly this is a, an important way to avoid some of those negative side effects that can really, really you know, sometimes those side effects end up being worse than the problem they're trying to treat. So well, mitigating those problem. effects is mm -hmm. really, really promising. Yeah, we, the, gen, the genetics now tell us uh, a lot about your detoxification, so that's one side of it. And then many drugs are proactive. They, you, you know, the drugs come in, we could divide them into a couple, uh, let's say, classes. One class being the inhibitory drugs. They're going to go in, they're going to stop something. They have a target, they hit that target, and your body stops doing something because mm -hmm. it's probably out of control. The other side of it is a drug that will promote a response of some kind. Now, you may because of certain genetic variations, inhibit that action or either render that drug ineffective or it may become dangerous in another way by promoting other things. If I know something about your genetics, I can predict those things and avoid them. That's true prevention. Mm -hmm. Instead of what's commonly done, which is 
you go into the doctor and they write you a prescription and you take that, that drug for may, maybe a few days, maybe a few years. And suddenly you're getting all these weird things going on. And the doctor goes, oh, well, I'm going to take you off that and we'll try this instead. Right. Trial and error. Right. <laughs> and I've actually had conversations with doctors mm -hmm. and I kind of say, wow, it just kind of seems like all, you know, all you can really do is is just guess with these different drugs and the different combinations and, you know, just kind of seems like a shot in the dark. Is that true? And he said, yes. Yeah. I would agree. So. And, and sometimes good comes of that. Sometimes they'll actually experiment on you and, and they'll get a good result, result and they'll tell other people about it. This was in, this drug was indicated for this, but it seems to also affect this. So we'll use right. it there. But I would rather have, I would rather work on information and then have a better approach then just try things out on you because I could hurt you. I could help you. you know? Right. And it's a big risk to take potentially. It is. It is. I want to go back quickly because you mentioned that the FDA actually has a new website mm -hmm. now where we, yeah. uh, where they're beginning to compile this information, compile this data. Um, isn't it also true that regarding the negative effects we might have from a drug that we as the consumer are actually responsible for submitting that to the FDA so that they have that information on file? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's what the FDA... The FDA is supposed to be a safeguard. They're supposed to be watching out for us. And, you know, you and I have had discussions before about some of the conflicts and the business side of it. Mm -hmm. But even though the FDA may be not be doing the job that we would have a standard for, they still are looking out for us. Right. And the best tool that they have is the adverse event reporting system that this is in place. Every drug, uh, even say NutraSuite or, or other products, you can report them to the FDA and then they compile these statistics and it really gives us some good information to know, okay, maybe we should pull this off the market because we've got a lot of people being hurt by it. Mm -hmm. or affected in some way. Right. But if nobody reports the effects, if you just simply stop taking it, then the next person won't know. Right. And I think that's an important thing, you know, when we talk about as consumers, you know, taking some responsibility and how could we yes. actually do something ourselves personally to improve the situation and improve the safety of you know, other people and certainly ourselves as well, this idea that, I mean, I never knew that we had to report our own drug reactions to the FDA. Um, well, they're not going to penalize you, but the system right. But in they place. certainly won't know if <laughs> we don't do Correct. it. Correct. So, so in a sense, it is almost a penalty. But you're right. We, we have a responsibility as a consumer. You, you, it's a real mistake to just take something your doctor gave you and without any question, just hope that, that, you know, that the best intentions were made. Mm -hmm. It's important that you ask questions to the doctor that's prescribing things to you. It's important that you talk to the pharmacist that hands you the, right. the prescription. It's important that you take a look at the label and, and have a, at least a little of understanding of what to expect. Mm -hmm. And it's also important if you have an issue with it that, that somebody knows about it. Right, and that you actually go to their website, and it's a pretty quick process to it submit is. your. Um, yeah, with with the internet, you, it's not hard at all to to report an adverse event, and right. you can uh, you can do it pretty quickly. Right. So, back to so we've got this new kind of. I think it's it's really really great this website where they're actually starting to compile this information mm -hmm. and look at how our genetics might affect the way that we respond to certain drugs. At the beginning of the video, you kind of mentioned that, yes, it's not so much that our genetics make this certain thing happen, but that our genetics do respond to our environment, our lifestyle, our diet. Um, we've actually talked about that in a couple mm -hmm. different videos, what would be described as epigenetics. Right. You can't just look at your genes and say, well, this is going to happen. There's no way to do that. And mm -hmm. The only way we knew that was by learning more. In the beginning, it was thought, well, we'll find the diabetes gene, we'll find this gene, that gene, and maybe we'll go in some, with some nanotechnology and we'll alter those genes and that's the end of all disease. Didn't work. If you look at it that way, it, it was a total failure. Mm -hmm. A lot of money invested, a lot of... The exciting part is, though, as we understand epigenetics or the fact that the genes really are responding to your lifestyle, now we've got some information we can use mm -hmm. because... It's pretty exciting that <clears throat> that you can get a different response. What if I were to tell you that in your genetics there was a disease and you had no choice? I mean, maybe I just shouldn't tell you. But <laughs> but if I can tell you that, yeah, there's some predispositions here. If you don't 
do some of the right things, you, you have the ability to create this problem, but right. you also have the ability to, to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And that's really more the truth. And that's where epigenetics come in, because depending on how your lifestyle is lived, your body is only trying to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. And your ancestors as well. I mean, they placed marks and they use the genes in a certain way and your body gets that information as well. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how you live your life, you'll get a certain response. Right. And the thing I love about epigenetics is that you're right. Whereas Previously, the kind of, you know, previous perspective that, oh, you have this gene, this is what's going to happen, kind of makes us powerless because obviously we can't yeah. change our, our genetics. Um, but with epigenetics and this understanding that actually our genetics and what actually, you know, comes to play in terms of our health and our body actually depends a lot more on our environment. It gives us a lot of control. It's an end result. You know, yeah. it gives us a lot of, you know, potential ways that we actually can Absolutely. do things to improve our health and kind of mm -hmm. change um, the journey that our body's going to take as we get older. Yeah. E even if you head down the wrong path and get... I, I hate this get, I got a disease because you actually develop it. There's mechanisms. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. But even if you end up at a point where you're experiencing a disease... That actually gives you a lot of power to undo it. Mm -hmm. Even even talking about cancer, you got to be careful saying there's a cure for cancer. However, the more we understand cancer, the more they're finding, hey, there's a lot we can do to right. prevent it and even to to turn it around. Right. So in a, in a way, it's not a, it's a still a scary diagnosis, but it's not as scary as it used to be. It's not like the just you know here is the end. You know right. we kind of there has been this. I mean, I remember, you know, when cancer was becoming increasingly more common and I was just kind of, you know, like you would get this cancer diagnosis and that's a death sentence and there's nothing you can do. And you're right. Actually, now the research is finding that there are some things that we can do mm -hmm. in our lifestyle to affect, you know, to affect our lives, to affect our health. It's, um, and it's, that's really, really empowering. It is because it's published in the literature that over 80% of the, over 80%, of the causes of cancer are lifestyle factors. Wow. Not my genes, not not something out of my control. Right. So maybe your genes yeah. play a role they're, because they're we all there. have genes yeah. and our genes are going to play a role because we all have right. them. Um, but that, yeah, it's not a, you know, uh, just blanket statement. This is what's going to happen. There's nothing you can do. You're right. powerless. Right. Sort of thing. It, it To me, it's, it's much, much more empowering. Mm-hmm. And even though some people don't want to hear it because it, you know, it, I don't want to say it places blame, but I think that the power of, of knowledge can really be used in a good way. Right. And I certainly yeah. do too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time You're today. And I look forward to uh, doing more videos with you again soon. Fun to be here. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and leave your comments, letting us know what you think. You can also leave your video requests and questions as well. I hope you'll subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel. In the meantime, I'm Psyche Truth correspondent Karina Rachel, and I look forward to seeing you next time.